What's up, what's up, everybody? You know your boy is back. Smoking Word Podcast is always brought to you by CasaTheRock.com. That's the merch store. Go cop some merch. Europe, worldwide, you can go to CasaTheRock.eu. Tell Theo The Rock sent you. But we have a whole bunch of gear there. We got snapbacks. We got slides. We got ashtrays. If you want it, we got it. Shout out to my Patreon family. Always, you're always going to get a, a, a shout out from me. Um, Thank you for always holding me down. Make sure you tune into YouTube. I just dropped the espresso and the breakfast um, episode. So tune into our YouTube channel, Smoking Word TV. And Patreon, you can always um, join the Patreon if you want to help, you know, support the show. Um, Patreon.com slash the Smoking Word. You get that exclusive fucking um, videos. You get exclusive videos. You get the podcast ahead of time. You get to know who's on the podcast before all the other civilians out there. So and also it helps to show, you know, do all the little extra things. You know what I mean? So um, shout out to my Patreon family, Chris Enriquez. I want to shout out CC Delivery, my third coast family farms. Yo, let me tell you. They keep my mind right and keep me focused like everybody out there. So shout out to them. Follow me on Instagram, CasaTheRock.com. Uh, follow me at HoyaRock357 on Instagram. The Smoking Word Podcast on Instagram. Um, Smoking Word TV on YouTube. You know the deal. We're out here. We're grinding. A lot of things coming up. Um, at the end of next month, we got a couple of shows with H2O, um, uh, Madball, and Hazen Street. New Jersey sold out, but from what I know, there's a couple tickets still left for Rhode Island. So Rhode Island, stand up. And when I tell you get these tickets, this may never happen again. So if you want to be part of that haze in history, Rhode Island is the spot. The Met Cafe, get those tickets. And this week, the Smoking Word presents Bass Killer from Rancid and the one and only Charger, my boy Matt Freeman. Let's set this shit off. Hey, buddy. Hey! Yo, <laughs> let me tell you, you right away have um, a, a visual and audio. Man, hold on. <laughs> standing, only, listen, only Roger got the first standing ovation, but you're going to get the second one, right? All right, thank you very much. It's just because you're a bass killer and you came in gangster with the audio and the visual. Yeah, well. <laughs> no, what's time. up, motherfucker? Matt Freeman in the motherfucking building. What's up, bro? Good, I'm buddy. glad. I'm glad. It time it, it it lined up good because I've been wanting to get you on this for a while, and um, which I'm still gonna get you eventually on uh, all about the bass episodes I'd be doing. Oh so, yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah. So I had one. So I get on with me and Craig, Craig ahead, and we get different people on. And I had you were one in one of my um, Salvador Dali mixtures <laughs> of guests that I like putting together. But then uh -huh. this came up. What came up was when the new album dropped and all that. And I, I've been rocking it. And I said, yo, what, what the fuck am I thinking? Let me now's the time. Like, let, let's hit yeah. it while it's hot, you know? Oh, well, thank you. Yeah, thanks for having me. No, hell yeah. So what's up? What you up to? Like what you've been up? Like what you've been up to? Nothing. Last? You know, uh, the record, the Charger record came out last Friday. So that was pretty cool. You yeah. know, we recorded a while back and, you know, the whole supply chain vinyl world, it took a while to get it actually out. Yeah. And then, um, which is insane how things come full circle. I remember waiting for vinyl back in the 90s. It was a big <laughs> deal, you know, like, <laughs> no. oh, you can only have 40 minutes per side or 40 yeah. minutes per side. And now you're like starting to like you have to all these old skills back. Yep. And you want to know what this is? This record had to be on vinyl, too. Like, like listening to it, I was like, this shit had to be on vinyl. Like it, it, it feels like it wouldn't have been complete if you didn't do a vinyl for this. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I, we sort of felt the same way. I mean, we had to have like two sides and uh, just the flow of the record and the kind of record we wanted. You know, we really thought a lot about I mean, people listen to music 
differently now than when we were kids. Yeah. We're about the but, same age, right? So, yeah. I mean, yeah. No. And I, and, and I, and I felt it like that cause I hear it as a whole, you know, I take it for, you know, I put it all together, you know, I, how I see things and I'm like, style wise. So I, I always look at the style or right, how I feel when I'm listening to, okay, how it's laid out. And I'm like, yeah. man, when I, when I was listening to it, it was, all, it's your, I already knew your style or where you were going to go with it. Cause I remember hearing, you know, the other stuff. Yeah. And I, but, but then I was like, I never put it together till I heard this record where I was like, yo, this shit had to be on vinyl. Like, like it just feels like it, it, it that era today. Thank you. Yeah, because that's what we were sort of shooting for. We were trying to, I mean, we were, we were trying to make a throwback record or anything, but it was like, we really like, we were sort of digging deep in like all kinds of influences and, you know, trying to do that kind of thing. Yeah, no, because obviously, you know, Motorhead in the building, obviously, yeah. you know, I, you always had that. That is, But what I like about the record is it has a, 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 the rock and roll, like, the very simple but all feeling type of riffs in, the, in those songs. Like, you don't got to think about it too much, but it, you ride through the songs. Like, it just feels like that's where it belongs. And that's the type of shit I like where it's all chops, not too much thinking, but all feeling. Yeah, that's, you know, it's interesting you say that because actually we were really thinking about that. You know, there's a, people who have a lot of misconceptions, I think about all kinds of stuff like, like I was told once, like, you know, Black Sabbath, like, you know, Black Sabbath is a swing to it. It's almost a jazz swing, especially those first few records. Absolutely. But people don't get that. You know what yeah. I mean? And we came really as I think it's maybe because of the rhythm section, me and Jason, yeah. you know, I think a lot about as you do. I think a lot about rhythm. Yeah. And I think a lot about just visceral, like, you know, I mean, I'm known for this guy that can play a lot of notes and, you know, do the whole thing and stuff. But I you really, got that savage shit in you. I know you do. Yeah. But I really but I, you know, the thing about it, simple is better sometimes, you know what I mean? And just getting the groove. And I think people lose sight of that, you know, at yeah. least in rock music sometimes. So, yeah, you know, yeah, really yeah. Like, like, you know what it is, is that obviously, like you said, exactly. You're you were known because obviously the other stuff, the rants and stuff and the other stuff is a lot of, you know, just how you swing it and how you, you know, Riding it, or I don't even know how you call it was the proper term, but that style of playing, yeah. And to be, and I, and I said it, and I, and I said it before. I was never a fan of that style till I saw you guys, because you, again, the Sabbath and the more balls came out in it in the style you were playing it. Like yeah. it didn't sound goofy to me. Now, when I say goofy, it's not that it's not uh traditional sounding to that style like the rockabilly stuff but it was never my my cup of tea it was always too busy where i was like not paying attention to the rhythm and too busy listening to the all the stuff when i watched you with rancid i remember watching and i'm like you playing the least but i'm like it was played like lemmy so it was played you you weren't sounding like lemmy but it was leading like lemmy but you were doing licks like a fucking i became a fan you know, well, thank you very much. Yeah. I mean, Rance is, is really rhythm based, too. I mean, me and Tim playing together since we were little kids. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, we had, we definitely have a groove, you know, and especially now. I mean, well, God, I guess Brand's been in the band like 15 years now. Crazy. I remember. Yeah, no, yeah. Crazy. Yeah. It's 06, I think. Yeah. So when we 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 lock in and I mean, there's you know, there's a thing there. I mean, just like you do, I remember seeing Hazen Street in a, I don't know if you remember this. We played, I think it was Gross Rock Festival, like in 2000 and. Yeah, a lot of it, not for sure. Devil's Brigade, and I walked over to that, and I watched mm -hmm. you guys, and you guys have that too. I mean, it's just that, you know, and it's Matt Ball too. I mean, it's just, I, I think all the great bands just have a good, you feel it, you know? Yeah, so and again, you know, and that's what I love, because um, and it's great for bass players that are listening to this, and especially listening from a guy like you that, exactly that, um, a big part of it is listening to the overall you know, the, 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 the pulse of a song, like the, of course, you know, everybody could do their thing within the song, but what comes first is the feel of the, of, of the riff, the feel of the section. And then, okay, everybody goes in on what they do. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and you're, you're a very technical bass player. So it's, it's great when people like you go back and say, listen, fundamentals, you know, it's rhythm first. And obviously you build off that, you know, yeah, that's that's yeah, that's what I try to do. Yeah, yeah, and let me. So you were saying, so you grew up with, with Tim. Is that the connection you and Tim from kids? 
Oh, I, how who was that? Like you, Tim, Lars? How you guys connected? Like, oh well, me and Tim, uh, me and Tim known each other since we were like five years old. I mean, oh, we, we, shit. we, we well, yeah, we grew up in the same town, Albany, California, and um, oh, I didn't we, know that long. Yeah, Gosh. which in Albany in the 1970s. Albany's a little town, so you have the East Bay, right? And then you mm-hmm. have like Oakland, and then you have Berkeley, and then you have Albany. Gotcha. And they're all on the eastern shore of the San Francisco Bay. Like, and Albany's pretty much directly across from the Golden Gate Bridge. Got you. And we grew up together, and we started playing together in high school. And, you know, we've just been playing together ever since. So yeah. that was that. And then, you know, we did bands. We did Operation Ivy together. Then um, Rancid, you know, we did, we've done all kinds of stuff. But then Rancid came along, and it was just me, Brett Reed, and it was a three-piece. And then we got Lars in about the end of 92 we didn't do the first record with him uh-huh but we did uh but he came in right after the first record was recorded because we we'd already practiced and we're ready to go for the first record yeah and uh and then you know and then the rest is history and then brett decided to leave the band in 06 and then brandon came aboard we got him from he was in a band the used was, yeah i remember i remember when he was go- going to you guys i was like oh shit was yeah like, oh, he was shit. he was funny you know we didn't we didn't i I remember at the time, a lot of people got bent out of shape about this, but you know, when, when Brett decided to leave, which was fine, um, we, we got, we had some tours lined up and we had known Brandon for, from Warp Tour uh, from 03, because he'd been on there with the used and all those bands like, you know, Glassjaw and Pennywise, yeah. whatever. But anyway, um, he, we, Tim called him up and said, Hey, can you do this stuff? And he's like, yeah, great. And then he came in the band and we loved him and, you know, he decided to stay, but we didn't try anybody out because I don't, I don't know how, if you've ever done this, but everyone I've known that has ever tried out anybody for a band says it's really a horrible fucking process. I've done it and it sucks. It's the yeah, worst. I just I don't you know, I mean, and what happens if you get your friends in there? It's like, sorry, it's not working out. Yeah. You know? I, Are we going to be friends now? Oh, like, yeah, that shit happened. You lucked you know, out. Brandon, so, Brandon's a fucking killer. You guys. Yeah, lucked he's, out. he's amazing. You know, and he I tell you something as far as drummers go, you know, he, he did a real difficult thing, which was he came into a very established band that had a lot of records and he managed to play those songs the way they were like sort of meant to be played, but to give him his own flavor yeah. and then to get his own style. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I don't no. think he gets enough credit for, you know, yeah, no, mean? no, for sure. He's a killer. Like, like, yeah, to me, you know, like, yeah, to me, he's rancid. Like I, I, I remember him cause when playing with the used, cause Hazen would do some shows or we were on one of those warp tours or whatever. So that's how I met him originally. And then, you know, I'm used to seeing him with you guys. So I was like, you can't get rid of him now. He's fucking. No, he's, you know, he's a funny kid. We always joke around because I actually met. So the use was coming up pretty strong in 03, 02, 03. And I, they were half on my radar. You know, I mean, you know, so many fucking bands out there. Yeah. And I was in New York City with my wife um, and we had gotten invited to this dinner. And it was one of these kind of dinners where a bunch of different people showed up just and he had come with somebody and he just and he looked about 12. Yeah, I thought he was someone's he still, kid. He still does. He's, he's gonna be embarrassed when I say this. Like, yeah. In his green mohawk, right? This is like spring. It's before the warp tour, right? Yeah. And so everybody sort of, you know, the, there's different seating and stuff. So my wife got seated next to Brandon, right? And I was sitting next to somebody else, you know. And it's just a big dinner, whatever. And after the dinner, my wife's like, "Oh, uh, did you see? How I sit by this." Kid Brandon, he's in this band, The Used. He loves your band so much. I'm like, oh, fucking who doesn't? You know, blah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, know, <laughs> you know what I mean? And I'm like, who did he come here with? He's in a band because I, you know what I mean? And yeah, oh, he's such a nice guy. And we talked all about these from Utah. And I'm like, okay, that's that's great. You know, oh, like, yeah. <laughs> and then I put it together at one point. And I was like, oh, The Used, right? Yeah, we're going on tour with them. And I saw him on Warp Tour. And I'm like, oh, yeah, he had that dinner there. And like, and, uh, it was pretty funny though, because you know, and, and then we we became friends. Everybody became friends with Brandon and everything, and then he joined Rancid. But I always joke like, if he would have been a dick to my wife at that interview at that <laughs> dinner, it would have been the first of all he never would have gotten the Rancid. Second of all, it would have been the worst fucking summer of his life. Yeah, exactly. You right. <laughs> yeah, you and you guys would have had Tommy Lee on drums. <laughs> yeah, right. But uh. But it, it all it's weird how things work out like that, you know? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And, 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 and let me take a guess. We're going to rewind a little bit. I was guessing, I said, he must have played in a school band. 
that you oh, played yeah. in. Oh, I, I yeah, you have to because I was. What, I'll, I'll just. I don't care anymore. I was no, no, no. But there's nothing wrong. But what, what, nothing wrong with that. I they didn't. This was fucked up in my school. This is pretty fucked up. Now I learned this later on in life that uh, obviously I come. My school was a. Uh, in the hood and shit, but we had to be a certain grade to be able to play instruments. Oh yeah. So from a, you know you had to be in the more like the, the more the smarter kid class to be, and otherwise you had to play a fucking a recorder. And I remember me and Beto, a couple of guys I grew up with that ended up playing in bands. He was he's my witness. We're 11, 12 years old doing music class, and we're like, yo, we want to learn to play guitar, or get the bass, you know, look at it. We want to. They're like, nah, you guys can't do that. You got to learn this. And I'm like, yo, I ain't playing this shit. And I, and I can't read music. I was never good at it. And yeah. she, I never forget this. She told me, you expect to be in a band and you can't read music? And she looked at me like a scumbag bitch. She wrote, she told me, you'll never do nothing with music in your life. This is what she told me. And I was probably 12 years old. That's and Beto's my witness out there, everybody. But yeah, well, fuck her. She's probably six feet on there. And I got nine albums. So fuck her, you know, and I don't know one note. I don't even know what I'm, I'm fucking tuned to at the moment. So fuck yeah. her. I actually got real lucky. I, I started playing trumpet when I was, um, I guess, about third or fourth grade. Oh, hell yeah. Trumpet. And, uh, oh, I really liked it. And then um, I played that for a long time. And then when I was a kid, I got braces. I'm from fifth grade or something. And I couldn't really play the because, of you know, the mouthpiece goes on. Yeah. your lips. So was, I couldn't really play the high notes anymore. So I ended up. I had actually a really good music teacher and he put me on baritone horn, which is sort of like a version of a tuba. Uh -huh. And I played that. And then in the, you know, I started playing bass in high school. And then, um, you know, I, I did, I do read music. I did read music. So yeah. I just got a book and sort of figured it out and I got an old bass and uh, my father actually bought me, you know, a bass for Christmas when I was back like, at 16, like a Fender music master. And, uh, you know, I just went from there. I had a really, really good teacher. Um, I had a really good teacher, this guy, uh, Jeremy Cohen. He's from Berkeley. And when I met him, he was a gigging. It was in the 80s, early 80s, right? He was a gigging guy. He knew like every Motown song. Oh, yeah, I get so, to you know, he, was, he, was, he was just one of these cover gigging guys. And I got actually really lucky with him because he really, because I wanted to play everything like 100 miles an hour. I was a big Who fan, you know, it's like yeah. I want to do everything. But he taught me how to read jazz charts because I was in jazz band. And he also like, I got a sort of such a weird situation. My, my hands aren't actually that big. And I broke my wrist when I was a kid really badly or my whole arm actually just got mangled. Uh -huh. And so I can't, can't really see here in the camera, but I can't put yeah. my hands Wow. Back. That's crazy. Yeah. It's that's like, your fucking superpower. You motherfucker. I'm well, going to break my hand right my, now. My hand's always off the neck. <laughs> You got the right. hook like Jameson. Yeah. So, and so I, so he would look at me because back in the eight, I've talked about this before back in the eighties, you know, Jocko Pastorius was a big thing. And I remember, and they sort of teach you, they, they want you to, um, to, you know, I'm going to, can I do a demonstration? Yeah, absolutely. I want you. I insist. Right. So look, so they would teach you, you'd want to do this thing where you'd have this like reach that already is insane for me what you're doing right well, now. Well, they do it because if you watch all and they're, they're, you know, you play everything like this. And you move, I cannot do that. Yeah, I have to hold it like this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I can only do that. So I'm always like this, you know, and I move yeah. my hand a lot. So that's just that. But the good news is about that is he figured that out, and he's like, okay, we're gonna work with what you can do, not what you can't do. That's the fucking and, and great I it really right it helped it helped me immensely. That's a great teacher there that doesn't try to make you play like somebody else, but how to how to um, basically he's your steroids for what you got. Just, you know, I'm, I'm helping you work with what you got. The same thing with me. Like my thing was um, I was never a technical guy when I was younger. I was te more technical, but sloppier. I don't even know if you could be both. But when I was younger, the, big, <laughs> the big thing <laughs> when I was younger, the big thing was. You know, all the you know, when I was in my first hardcore band and then we were getting, you know, music was becoming more metallic. I remember as a kid, it had to be, oh, it got to be technical. You know, you just got to make it as many notes as possible, blah, blah, right. blah. So every riff I would write would be all over the place, but I would I would not play it clean. Fast forward. Madball was more caveman music. 
I learned how to do more. What I liked was I was, you know, I love hip hop and I loved all the Motown stuff and I love bopping my head. So I learned like, okay, I got more room to do this. I wasn't technical. So, okay, what I'm doing, I got this space. Let me just hit it like how I always wanted to sound like when a car radio drove by playing hip hop, you know, it was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You would just hear the, and I said, that's how I'm going to play bass. I said, I can't fill in like what you would do tightly. I'm going to let the, 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 the low end resonate in that space. So through the years, I learned how to boo, boo, let shit breathe and kind of it kind of it covers up my lack of technique in, within a riff. Well, I don't even know if it covers up your lack of technique. I mean, feel is like, I, I don't know. I mean, you can, you know, how many bands have you seen like, you know, that, you, you know, that there's this. Uh, term that I used to use like talent talent attack you know how many bands you see that says yeah. all the stuff you know and like as Lars Fredrickson used to say you needed a calculator in the pit yeah <laughs> yeah 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 that's yeah, yeah. nice, true and, a, and, but, but then you get a, one band you know they're playing three notes and you're just like holy shit this is just like this is true. like such a groove and I it's like true. um I think it actually took me a long time to um one of the things that really changed my playing a lot was in 2004 uh I got asked to do a tour and uh, be in social distortion. Uh, I played, there was, I was basically transitioned there. Their longtime bass player um, had left and I had a block of time and, you know, I eventually I was going to have to go back to Rancid. So they just sort of put me in there and I really had to change my style a lot, you know, cause I mean, honestly, you know, I sort of went in there and it's like, well, I'm Matt Freeman and this is social distortion and, yeah, yeah, yeah. and I like rockabilly, so I'll be fine. Yeah, but yeah, I, yeah. Yeah, but I had to learn how to play completely like sort of slowed down groove like Mike's all about that band is all about groove and like a lot of the songs are just one chord structure the entire thing. Yeah, but it's dynamics and stuff. So I had to really, really slow down and change and it really made me a better play. I came out and also I was playing with these amazing musicians. I mean, Mike can play. Yeah, Johnny Two Bags, uh, the late Charlie Quintana the drummer and um, this guy Danny McGoo on keyboards. I mean, these guys were like top notch musicians. I mean, yes. And so I really had to go in there and, you know, up my game. Yeah. But I think also just playing with different people, you know, that helps too. But yeah, I think people need more space. I try to get more space a lot. I think it's a hard thing to do. You know, what I think is what people, like I said, that's why I like what you do. Cause since I could hear the Sabbath in the lines, it, it doesn't just come off like a rockabilly line to me. You know, I hear a little more grit in it. There's a little bit more dirt on it. So it's, it, it, that's what makes it more unique. That's why I remember being like, oh, you know, okay, I get it. Like now I know why I like it. Like why I thought I, why I don't like and what he's not doing, but he's doing something that I like, you know, it was well, hard to describe. Talking about, you're talking about Charger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and general, just the, the, the style of, you know, how you ride. I was like, man, like you ride line. I, I was never a guy who could play a lot. Charger's more, less lines than let's say a Rancid, but the style of playing where it's like that lemmy lines it's like a it's just it's just how i like it and it it, it, it rockabilly to me sounded too much like um it sounded like in the old days you had those uh like the computers had the, the punched out holes and it, it sounded <laughs> that's what it felt like to me you know um the the, the charger lemmy is a little bit more got a little bit more ridge to it a little bit it's a little bit more it, it moves better but yeah, I'm, I like I'm trying, to, I'm trying to fill up space. Yeah. Like I'm doing a lot of stuff. Like, you know, I, I one of the things I took from Lemmy is Lemmy would do this thing and I'm going to get in trouble because I don't want to like critique his style and everyone has their own vision yeah. of what Lemmy does. But what I took from Lemmy was let me play that bass like a guitar. You know, he had that Rickenbacker to his Marshall amp, yeah, exactly. you know, yeah. freaking 12 and a half. And he rang a lot of notes, did a lot of chords. And I'm not really doing chords, but I'm ringing a lot. I'm trying to fill up space because I only got the drums and the guitar. Yeah. You know, Rance is a little different because you got Tim and Lars in there. And then you got, it's, 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 it's a different yeah, vibe. For sure. You know, for Charger, I'm trying to like fill more stuff up. Yeah. And, and, and tracking the Charger stuff. Um, obviously, um, what, what's the difference between you think tracking the Charger? I mean, you're a killer either way, but, and it's your stuff. Um, what do you think about um, style wise? Did you go in as far, let's say tone wise, did you, um, did you go in same style? You know, it's, it's very yeah, I similar. Didn't, honestly, I, I really didn't, I really didn't change much. I mean, I, I use the same. It sounds like you, you know? Yeah. I, I think also, I think, I, I think uh, 
I think I'm going to sound like me no matter what I play. You know what I mean? I think sure. it really comes from your hands. You yeah. know what I mean? And uh, I practice, one of my tricks is, and it was because I used to not have an amp, is I practice a lot without the amp. And mm. that, if you get a good tone out of the wood, and I, I pretty much only play fenders or wood bass. I don't play, a lot of people play the graphite stuff. I, I like wood, whatever. But if you can get a good tone out of the bass, um, just hearing it, like, you know, not coming from an amp. I mean, amp amplifies it. So it's going to amplify what's ever there, you know? If you don't have good form on your, you know, if you don't have a good form doing this, no matter what form that is, it's not going to sound good. So it's going to sound like me, but I, I use pretty much the same thing. I used a P bass. I used, uh, see what else I did. I used the it, same amp. <laughs> AJ, do you sure you want to give those secrets out? Because I want to know. Oh, those I don't secrets. care. I'll tell any, but you know, people, like, I want to know, let them know. Cause I want to know. Yeah. I, I mean, used, I, um, I've looked, I used, but I used an on this one. I used, uh, the, the, I was playing the, uh, what you call it? Fender pro, but it was a pro one. I'm on the pro two now, but it was a pro one. I use, um, let's see what else do I use. I use, uh, here, I got the setup right here. Oh yeah. I, I want to know because that might just be my next setup. Okay. Hold on. That might just actually be my next motherfucking setup right there. It sounds great because you know what, again, what I love about what you do and you keep a fender sounding like a fender. Yeah. So I've got, I don't know if you can see it here. I see it. So oh. this is what I use. I just real simple. I use this old uh, pork pie paddle and I got this geezer butler wah. All right. The wah of the geese are the king. For me. And this is tuner, but I just, I run this pretty, I don't run it that hot, but. Uh, so that I gives you what that, that, that pork, what is that? I, I've never even heard of it. I'm not, I'm not a pork, big tech. Sorry, it's a, not pork, but it's a pork loin. Pork loin. I'm not sure they make this purple pedal anymore, but they make something like it. And uh, they make something like it and it actually gives its tone. It's, it's really cool. Cause it sounds like an old SVT cranked. Right. So I'm using that. And then I'm using, uh, I use a Fender 800 baseman, the new one. Yeah. He has like a tube, uh, Two preamp and then a solid state power amp. So. Wow. So that pedal helps do that because that's what I like. What I like is you always keep always, no matter where you set up, it sounds classic, but it always has balls. And my problem was other people, when they would give their, their P bass, that type of grit, it was too midi for me. You don't get that. No, I don't. And I don't. I Thank mean, a God. Lot people, yeah. Well, I, yeah. I just, you know, I, I like overdriven stuff, but it's like, you, you got to be careful with bass. You know, you can't overdrive it too much. And, you know, there's different kinds of, you know, every, I, you know, everybody like, you know, I know that, well, at least he used to, uh, Craig from sick of it all used to use sans amp for yeah. years. I don't know if he still does, but, yeah. um, you know, there's those pedals are decent. I'm, you know, but I, yeah, I use that, that, uh, way huge thing. And it seems pretty good. And also I've got the, on the RB 800, I don't have one here, but it, it's got a little bit of the storage. So you can overdrive the tube a little bit. But again, I'm also hitting the string really hard. Yeah, of course. So, I mean, and I'm, I'm popping it, you know, like I. Yeah, how you plucking it for sure. Yeah, like I'm I'm hitting, I'm popping that string. You know what I mean? I'm using my wrist. I'm not really yes. using my arm. Yep. But yeah, I'll tell anybody anything. I don't, I never understood like keeping secrets. Like, you know, if you can sound like me, great. You win. Yeah, yeah. And, <laughs> and we all know at the end, without your hands and without the, the your, you know, your skin, yeah. That's exactly, you know, we all learn that the more you play, you know, I'm like, why I don't sound like that, you know, and, <clears throat> you know, it's like, it's the wood, how it works with your hands and just, you know, it's. Yeah, I mean, I wanted to, you know, sound like, you know, John Etwistle, you know what I mean? And so, and but I don't have two Marshall stacks. I can. Yeah. To <laughs> what first base was that a Fender? Yeah, first base was a Fender, and then my first P bass was actually, I'll show you. I've, oh, you have your first P bass? Yeah, I'm sort of in my room where I got everything. Uh, so, oh, yeah. That, uh, damn, there you one, go. This old 77. Oh, yeah. It, oh, you, that's so great rocking. that you still have it. Yeah, it's it needs frets, but I'm just, it's, I don't know. I, I really like it. They don't, for some reason, new bases don't wear in like they used to. I don't yeah, know. yeah. You know, again, it's, um, they, they cheapen out on the paint. You know, good paint wears out better. Yeah, you know? so I, I play jazz basses a lot too. I've got like, I play jazz basses over the years. I've done both, 
you know, yeah. how come the Wolves was recorded with a jazz bass? Yeah. You know, and, so, and, um, uh, the, you know what it is as, you know, I got gorilla hands as it is, but that shit was, it feels too small for me. Some of them, you know, they feel like, yeah, they're definitely I, small. Yeah. You know, and you know, what's crazy. Um, Talking about basses, I play some of the, you know, I jump on my, um, um, Ra, you know, who's playing now with Corn. He played with Suicidal. You know, he plays the Schecters or whatever he plays. The yeah, crazy the five strings. He actually sent me one of those. Yeah, but insane. But I play those. Forget five strings, four strings already, three strings more than I need. But um, uh, on the on the on those things, on some of those necks, not the five string, just the, those styles. I almost feel like I start tripping. Like they're too close together. The strings. It's like a weird. Yeah, I. He sent me one of his. Um, we traded signature basses at some point. Uh -huh. And um, I, well, I can't play like him. I mean, he that guy is. Have you ever seen him just fucking around? Oh yeah, I yeah. hate him too. I hate you, and I hate him. Yeah, Dude. I. I just well, two different involved. reasons. <laughs> and he's such a nice guy. Let's. Uh, by the way, he's such a nice guy because honestly, he could be a dick and be like, oh, okay. You, you hey, guys, I gotta tell you, eat it. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? I I'm, challenge you, Rod, to a fucking a one string competition, motherfucker. Yeah. Shout out to Ra. Pretty much sure I'd lose. Yeah. yeah. He's uh he nicest guy on the planet. I couldn't be happy for him. Happy yeah, yeah. Him playing with corn now. But um, but yeah, I, I the five string I've never the only five string I own is the one he sent me. It's really nice. It's this blue Schechner thing. And and you know, it's it's fun, but I, I just I don't four is like sort of my deal. And I'm not one of these guys like it's like well, fuck five strings, man. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah, yeah. You know, Mr. Five Strings playing with corn, so why don't you go talk? To yeah, 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 guy. You <laughs> complain about that string. You know and, what uh, I mean? So nah, like, nah, I hear you. And and let me ask you, when you did, you remember? Because I remember we played with you when you were doing the other band. When and we also played. Good, yeah. yeah, we also played with you in Italy, right? With Drop. Yeah, Murphy. Devil's Brigade. Yeah, that was a good show. Yeah, yeah I remember was, that. Yeah, that um. Yeah, that was when I was playing with Devil's Brigade, and I I was playing upright bass then, which yep. um, was glad I did, but I probably would never do again. Um, <laughs> and, and reasons being, I, I love the way it sounded, right? And that band was sort of built it was, it was like a sort of psychobilly rockabilly thing, and I, I like playing upright, and you know, uh, but taking one of those on tour is challenging. Oh my! You know, God. it's a wood instrument, and I learned how to work on them really quick, <laughs> and. Uh, yeah, because you have to, because you know the bridges get busted or something. And I actually, like an idiot, I was in England. And I I had a rental one and I put it up against an amp. Oh, and it fell and the neck came off. Oh man. And, uh, yeah. So there. whatever. I you know you live learning the hard way. That's how you learn. Don't. Do I remember that. seeing Pete Steele with one of those, but he had like the black one. You know, yeah. You know, a big crazy so one. I but uh, but yeah, that was that was a fun thing to do. That was that was actually really. That was actually a really fun show. I remember that. That it was yeah. like that weird indoor festival thing. Yeah, exactly. And like yeah. bootleg is selling everybody's shit right outside the Italian mob. That's Italy. Oh, man. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. Italy for you. So um, but yeah, you know, it was uh I did it and then at one point, actually later on in that tour, that was like a six week tour. My hand got all tore up and I just got an electric and I was just like, you know what, this is what I'm supposed to do. Yeah. And then you freaking ended up going and then so the, the charges stuff, because I remember when you were working on stuff, but that, was that it was pre COVID, right? Yeah, I mean, Charger started sort of at the end of 17, um, yeah. 2017. What happened was a drummer, uh, Jason Willer, who's a drummer of the band, he's a guy who's been around the scene forever. And I've known him for a long time. He's been in all kinds of bands. He did a stint in UK subs. He's in Jello's band, uh, Jello Biafra and the Guantanamo yeah, uh, the Tonimo people. Uh, the guy. the Guantanamo guys. Yeah, no, I yeah, you know, Jay, we played with Ingram. them in Europe until yeah. Yeah, but I've known him forever, and he uh, he gives drums lessons, right? And uh, my youngest son was, I guess, oh, God, 10, 9 or ten, and uh, wanted to take drum lessons, right? And um, so. I would take him to the, he, Jason at a studio in Oakland and I would take him down there. You know, I talked to Jason, you know, and he comes highly recommended and, and I knew the guy too. So he was taking lessons and then uh, he was talking to me and he's over the years, he's like, you know, we should do some pr music project. I, mean, I was the whole time. I was like, I don't, I don't do anything. I don't know. Maybe, but, yeah. you know, I've got enough going on. And uh, I don't know. Finally, he, he says, he goes, you know, we should do a band together. And I'm like, why do you want to do a band? I, you know, I don't know. I'm in a band. 
I'm in a really good band. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. And I've done the solo thing. It's hard. You know, it's hard. I mean, you know how it is. You know, yeah, bands, are, uh, bands are a lot of work, you know, and uh, too much. Yeah. And just, you know, and I, I was like, well, and I was like, okay, well, if you want to do, he goes, well, we should just jam. I go, what do you want to jam? Because I mean, Look, I like street punk and ska, but I already sort of do that. And yeah, why exactly? What are you doing? Know, the fucking... yeah, well, I'm doing it great. Yeah, you already got rants. What the fuck more are you going to go with it? Me and Tim and Lars got that. It's pretty, pretty sorted. <laughs> um, and so he's like, well, what do you like? And I'm like, I really like Motorhead and Black Sabbath. You know, and I've never really played that kind of stuff. And I like weird rhythm stuff. And I like some pro. I like a lot of the early Judas Priest, like, like Sin After, you know, what is it? Sin After Sin, like really, just really proggy yeah. stuff. So let's try that. And he's a real accomplished guy. I mean, he knows what he's doing. I mean, he can hold down a beat, but he's got that massive drum set. And yeah. uh, which I encourage, by the way, because, yeah, like, go big. Oh, yeah. And uh, and so we just started writing songs. It just it was actually really natural because I was just like, look, I'm going to do this as long as I'm having a good time. But I'm not going to try to, you know, if something happens, we get some shows, whatever, you know, but I'm not going to go out there and go 110 percent trying to build this shit. Yeah. You know, but you know, things happen and you know, we got a logo and we got this thing and you know, we got records and you know, so it it, it was natural yeah. and it was a lot of fun and it's still a lot of fun. So that's what we did. Yeah, yeah. No, I saw when you guys started playing the shows and I, and that was good because it was like um why I was glad it was good to see some of the big dogs coming out with their other projects first, you know, like, all right, Rancy did a couple of those shows. You did a couple, you know, since I'm talking about since everybody's coming back playing shows now again. Oh yeah. 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 So it was good to see that some people aren't scared. They're not scared no more, but it was good to see people coming out like, all right, our bands are doing whatever, but oh, we got our other projects. We're ready to play. We're out playing. We're you know, we're, we, we still want to do music. This is what we do. You know, it was just refreshing for a guy like me. That's also, you know, I'm in the fucking uh, in the bullpen where you to come out and play too and shit. So whenever I see somebody get out there, start getting I'm like, OK, OK, good. It's opening well, yeah, up. I mean, that's what we do, though. I mean, I didn't you know, I didn't I don't know if I chose this life or chose me. I don't know. But I just I, you know, this is I've been playing music since, like I said, third grade. I mean, it's just part of what I do and I do it. You know, I've been lucky that I'm so successful at it. And, you know, Rance is fucking awesome. And I got these great people around me and stuff, you know, and it, it's probably a whole world. I mean, I'm that people like, you know, you, I mean, we're just, it's, it's a whole, you know, yeah, we, I got friends all over the place as you do, you know what yeah, I mean? We're lucky for sure. I never really thought like, it sort of sucked, you know, you get older and you start thinking, eh, you know, sort of down the road, like you start seeing other guys sort of maybe, you know, drop off and like, what's got, you know, what's going to keep us from touring? And you're thinking like, oh, someone to fall down and injure their hip or, you know, <laughs> exactly. Medicaid. You know what I mean? Like I've yeah. had medical scares like 15 years ago, yeah. just like fucking lung king thing. And like, I remember, I remember worldwide pandemic wasn't on my fucking list. Yeah. You're already like, oh, you know I, mean? I, was, like, I wasn't thinking about that. I was like thinking, oh, there's going to be worldwide pandemics because basically shut shit down for two years. It's like, what? that's insane. Yeah, 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 right. No, I, I'll fucking, you know, crash my motorcycle before that happens. You know, yeah. but, you I know. said, no, we're, we're lucky. And, and in the same boat as you, like, we've done it where, you know, I think um guys like us that, that since we started this band stuff and we haven't stopped, sometimes we, you know, um age and also something like this sometimes lets us put the brakes on and look back for a minute. And then that's what we start realizing, like, you know, as corny as we may have thought then, now I say it openly, like, man, we're lucky. Like what you're saying, we're yeah. fucking lucky to be come from the scene that we come from, the mentality that our scene has, um, to have the friends that we've made, to do what we do, that people still give a fuck about it. We're still able to do, <laughs> what, you know, that's yeah, that's, scene. yeah, that's, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, you know, I, I told this story, um, the last, on one of these other podcasts uh, that I did, like, you know, um, well, you know, we could uh, everybody could judge your success is different for everybody. We know that, you know, it's yeah. financially this and this, this and that, blah, blah, blah. You know, um, when the, this when um, my mom's passed and all this stuff happened and it was during this whole pandemic also and whatever's going on. You know, I had somebody reach out for me and I forgot what country I kind of feel fucked up. But I think, you know, it was from somewhere, where, you know, one of these, you know, uh, small countries in Europe, you know, poor one of these poorer countries. Long story short. The, the guy hits me up. It's like, I'm a big fan for many years. Your music got me through s such and such. 
I, we feel bad for your family right now. We don't have money, but we have a house. And if you ever needed a place to stay with your family, to, to stay, you have a room here. You know, I got goose pimples right now. Just, yeah. you know, as corny as it is, there's millionaires that will, they won't, when they die, there'll be nobody at their funeral. You yeah. know, somebody yeah. like us, there'll be people that never met you that'll be crying. It, it's, it, it, you know, it goes, it, you know, it, it, it's, um, it, it is worth something. And it did take me to get older and also with kids to learn like, wow, I'm lucky that I got what I got. You know, um, it gave me a living. It helps, you know, it, you know, it's, it's still cool. You know, it's, uh, you know, we're lucky to do what we do. Yeah, I, I totally agree. I mean, I never, you know, I never, you know, I mean, everybody, you know, you bitch and moan and complain, but I tell you something, this thing put a lot of things in perspective Yeah. and I'm doing a lot better than most people. And, you know, if, you know, I couldn't play a show for 18 months. It's like, that's the worst thing that's going to fucking happen to me. Yeah. You know what I mean? And like, yeah. I, you know, my, I mean, I, you know, I'm like you, I'm pretty working class too. You know, I mean, my, my dad, you know, did a lot of, you know, he was a police officer. He had a, had to retire early because of injuries. You know what I mean? That's like worked all his freaking life. Yeah. You know, and here I am, you know, on yeah. a, you know, 10 o'clock in the morning, just bullshitting with you. My yeah, friend. exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Talking shit. I know. Yeah. You know, lucky, what I mean? I'm pretty lucky, sure. you know, like, but you know, but you know, and, and at the same time, what's great about it and not on some, like, um, trying to bring it back to this podcast and this type of shit, but like, you know, we even doing what we do, you know, Part of this, why I do this, obviously, was it help keep the it help keep the the brand alive during this whole shit. And yeah. also, I always like talking shit with my people. And people, when this podcast platform came out, people used to say, "Yo, that's perfect for you." And I go, "Oh, talking shit, I'm in." You know, hey, but I um, love it. you're doing great. Thank you, man. And you know, and with this, to me, it's like um, also, it's like a lot of people hit me up and they're like, "Yo, Hoya." Thank you for the podcast. They go, wow, this gets me through my day. Or, yo, I have sick kids and so and so. Or my, or I just got out of prison. Or I just got laid off my job. Yo, I look forward to your podcast. Yo, it keeps me going. Yo, you give me, you know, st I do it for the fun of it and for the culture. And it's helping people. And it makes me feel good as far as, you know, um, besides our, we just put out music that people like that it's absorbing in other ways, you know, yeah. if we meant it or not in a good way, you know, it, it, you know, it feels good and I'm glad. So it's like, we're still like, I tell people, um, we got to keep feeding our scene. And I don't just mean hardcore scene, the underground scene by yeah. podcast, new music by, by, by vets and new music by new guys and girls or whatever. The, we need all that to keep this. The metal guys got, it. I love metal. I'm a metal guy too. But the metal guys got their metal gods, you know, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, you know, the punk hardcore guys need. We need our space too. you know, a little bit more, yeah. you know, established in stone with, you know, look it. Shout out to, to Mick Jagger. We also got Vinny Stigma hitting stages right now, getting ready. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, yeah, and man, Vinny I don't, don't got no, you know, and Mick Jagger is a killer. Don't get me wrong. That dude's in shape, kills it performer but stigma's doing all that without a tour bus without you know trainers without um uh, uh, you know vegan um delights every day my point being is um you know i i'm glad that same thing like you it's very important that people also see that that we still we do music so this yeah. is what we do it's not like oh our scene is awesome little kid shit because you know that coming from the punk hardcore scene it used to be seen as, oh, that's like a little kid thing you grow out of. Yeah. When it, when it's like, no, look at all the greats now. Their influences are, you know, kid music. You know, they'll all trace them back to the, you know, <clears throat> the, the fucking, you know, whoever. Sid Vicious and fucking this one and Slade and this one and that one. You know, it's like, come on. Yeah, I think new music is important, too. I think new bands are important, yes. too. So, you know, bring Absolutely. I, I would hate to see things get like, you know, stagnant. You know, yeah. I mean, it's always like new energy. I mean, I just remember like, I always try to be, I, I just remember when I was coming up, you know, back, you know, whenever in the eighties or whatever, you know, you had these old, older bands who shall rename, 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 <laughs> remain nameless, just like, oh, you're just a bunch of little kids. And it's like, yeah. you're not from the city. This puts the Seas Bay bullshit. And yeah, just, yeah, yeah. It's like, all right, I'm going to remember this. Fucking yeah, cool. I'm cool as you when I'm 24. Yeah, you know? exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> like, 
Fast forward, you're playing mean, a like, fucking stadium. Well, uh, you know, I hear this stuff, you know, all these younger bands come up and then, you know, a lot of people are just like, oh, fuck these young guys. Like, really? Because. <laughs> yeah, I, I agree. I hate that shit. You know, like, you, you know what I mean? It's like, yeah, they're doing it. They're doing it in their own way. They're not doing it like us. Yeah. Why should they? Yeah, exactly. You know, like, like, I got a 17 year old who's going to shows and stuff and he's starting to get into music. And who's that. his bands? Who's his, who's his like where he's at? <laughs> He really likes these bands. Well, he likes all the bands that he grew up with. You know what I mean? Like, you know, all of, because he's been going to Rancid shows since he was a kid, you know, but I think he looks, I don't know how he looks at it. You know, I mean, he's known Lars and, I mean, Lars is his godfather. Tim's his god. Tim's his godfather. He he got no choice. Just been around the house. I don't know if he, I should ask him once. He's a real smart kid, but he, he's got all these like younger bands that he likes. Like he's going to, um, He's doing stuff now. He's going to shows and all these bands I've never heard of, yeah. you know, playing these house shows. And I'm like, fuck yes, you know, go to as many as you want. And like, you know, and I let them go on weekdays. I'm, you know, let me, let me, it's funny you say that because I was thinking that the other day, I was like, man, I really would love for my kids to grow up in the scene. And not because, oh, I want them in a band, not because of this, because I, I'm a street kid, you know, I grew up, you know, coming from the, the hardcore scene. And I also grew up in the hip hop in the street scene, yeah, yeah. which was just what it was. I don't want my sons having no part of that. I love that they could love all the hip hop they want. But I also know that a 16 year old where I was, you know, I, I had the, the, the brain was down the middle. So that half of me was my, that side was the hip hop side. The, the, my hardcore side was like, oh, uh, what's something? Um, where could we go hang out? We don't got nowhere to hang out. Okay, let's find our own spot to hang out. Let's make our own spot to hang out. You know, the whole, we don't need nobody. We do it ourselves. So yeah. at the end of the day, you take any punk rock, any hardcore type of scene, some of them have stupid ideologies and shit, but in general, it's a bunch of people that think the same that may, the, the regular world doesn't understand, so they make their own world. And and you got to be assertive. You got to be, you got to think about it. You know, think about it. When we were kids, 16-year-olds were promoters. They were drivers. They were musicians. They were producers. They were light men. And we were all 16, 17, 18 years old. Yeah. No, I, yeah, but it was always like, I mean, it's the same thing out here. You know, you're looking for what, you know a place where you belong you know that's what people want you know and that was what i loved about the scene here you know back then i think it's still like that it's sort of the it sounds sort of fucked up but it's sort of land of broken toys you know what i mean it's like yeah. where people you know everyone's sort of accepted and you get you know you get your yeah you know community yeah. there you know and it's been and it's you know it's been really good and like punk rock just being able to like play music and do that kind of thing yeah, mm-hmm. and and what and how did you guys find that shit? You and Tim, well, you you found it at the same time. It must have been then, right? You're listening to the same kind of shit. Yeah, I mean, you know, Gilman Street. Yeah, it's everywhere. I mean, there's a lot of shows. There, I mean, Bay Area is. I mean, there's a lot of stuff going. A lot of music comes out of the Bay Area. I mean, Bay Area is unique. You know, we've got everything from Metallica and Santana to Green Day to you know Rancid to whoever. You know what I mean? So like, uh, let me. All right, let me ask you this: While you're hitting that, why? Because you're coming from the Bay. How did you end up more towards the punk this and not the Exodus metal, which I know you guys love and they're great, but you know what yeah. I mean? You, and yeah. not that you weren't into metal early, but you know what I mean? How did you not go that way? Because I, I don't know. I just, you know, then. for whatever reason, it was just, I was just more, you know, drawn to it. You know, Gilman Street opened on New Year's Eve, 1986 to 87, you know, and we've been playing, we've been playing before that, but you know, that place was when it opened was, it was like sort of wide open you know, it was in the east bay it was in our neighborhood you know we grew up really close to there so you could you know get there it was an old industrial section yeah now i don't know it's the, yeah. the whole world has changed but it's it's it was you know the the bay area back then in the late 80s and early 90s you know it was, it was just a different place it was before the tech boom you know it was sort of wide open you could yeah. pretty much do what you wanted to do you know and it was just like i think it was just that freedom and that sense of community and again you know people you know we just i don't know we just drawn to it. you know that's the music we liked and we played and that's where we went and played it yeah and started finding yeah. it because i know obviously that is true um gilman that area is also like the the les for us you know the downtown you know music art degenerates yeah. everybody yeah. <laughs> 
you know, the big cesspool, the, the bottom of the toilet, basically, where we all end up. Well, your New York was, I mean, I remember, I remember the first time I went to New York City and I'd been to the East Coast before. My mom's from Massachusetts. So I used to go back there summers and Christmas, whatever, you know. And uh, But the first time I went to in New York City was I was playing with MDC oh. in 1990. Wow. And because uh, Operation Ivy never made it to New York City. We made it to New Jersey. We never made it over. And it was 1990 and it was ABC No Rio. Wow. You played ABC and I pull no up Rio. and I walked to the corner and there was these two cab drivers stopped fighting with crowbars uh, yeah. <laughs> the entire neighborhood and you had one it was like i just remember this basketball court on a corner and it had like this large fence and yeah. all these guys are on the fence why well, yeah yelling and cheering it on i'm like holy <laughs> shit but yeah i'm a savages this is not california oh yeah, yeah. So oh it's yeah like, it's like okay i walk back and <laughs> those were the days that was great like um, um freddie and you know used to live in the, in the squat roger squat down there but now remember, Roger, I give him this much. Roger's squat was dope. It wasn't like a squat, like he had his apartment <laughs> hooked up. I don't know how everybody else's shit was, but it was a squat. But you want to hear the funniest shit um, on our first uh, tour, first time ever getting a tour bus or whatever. They're like, oh, Roadrunner set it off tour. They're like, yo, we got a tour bus. Oh shit, you know how that is. Yeah, we yeah. had the tour bus pick us up in front of the squat. Yeah, the tour bus was probably worth more than the building. That was the best part. And then on top of that, we all come from the squat. We get in the bus and we're like, all right, we got to pick up stigma to Mott Street. Yo, Mott Street is this big. We made him take the bus down Mott Street. We're like, ah, oh, so crazy. You heard that story. That's great. Yeah. Oh, insane. But that was the LES that we grew up in, too. Like, it just looked like it really was. I look back now and I'm like, I knew it was dirty, but wow, it looks dirtier when you look at it under picture. It looks even crazier. Like. It was yeah. that grimy, like. Yeah, it was. Yeah, Rancid played ABC No Rio too. About three years later, and then, Rancid played ABC No Rio. Yeah, we did. It was when it was down. Yeah, I that did, get the fuck out of here! Fire trap down that one. I played it with my thing. band. That's a fuck yo. That's insane. To, I would have loved to have seen that shit. It was pretty. Ins there's pictures of it somewhere. I've seen pictures every once in a while. Yeah. You're like, oh, my God. Thank God you guys didn't have to do that again. Let me tell you, fuck that. It was fun, though. I mean, that was, you know, that 93, we went on tour. That was a, I mean, that was, that was a fun. I think that's when we started meeting all you guys. Yeah, you, I was going to say, you guys were on the East Coast a lot. Yeah, because we played, um, we played at, uh, what's that place called in New Jersey? City Gardens. City Gardens. You got to play a classic. We played with Sick of It All. Yeah. Classic. And this is 93. And I just remember, like, we were like, I mean, because, you know, growing up on the West, you know, to get it, people got to understand, got to put it in perspective. This is like pre-internet. Yeah. So what you're reading is in zines and like, you know, what we were reading about you guys, it was like, you know, your scene was like no joke. And we'd yeah. seen a lot of like, you know, you know, we'd seen a lot of strange bands like, you know, Youth of the Day come out. They played Gilman. They're amazing, you yeah. know, stuff like that. But um, yeah, we show up at City Gardens and it was sick of it all. And that was, I mean, they were selling that place out back then. Yeah. And we were like, this can go one of two ways. They're either, <laughs> yeah. They're either going to love us. Yeah. Or this is, we're not going to get out of here alive. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but and it we, worked. And we played and we killed it. They loved it. And we were just like, this is great. And ever since then, it was just like. Yeah, East Coast, you guys were fucking good. You were money in the Northeast for sure. That's why we would always catch you. I was like, oh, you guys are good out there. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. It was you a lot know. of fun. And now what and now with the now what's the deal with which well, as far as um shows with charger for right now? You got anything lined up? Uh, we got actually a show April 9th at the Starlight in Oakland. It's gonna be like sort of a record release excuse me, release party. And we're gonna do that. And then um I don't know, we're supposed to maybe go out actually on the East Coast and Midwest in June. We're still trying to put that together. You know, things are pandemic wiped a lot of stuff yeah, off the map. So it, it makes it just difficult to move around. Something. Yeah, we're just trying to like see what we can put together. You yeah. know, what I mean? gas is fucking ridiculous right oh, now. Oh, oh, it's insane. I didn't even, I didn't even think about it in that way. Just being able to play, but gas, that shit's forget yeah, about. Yeah, I mean, I don't really, I never really think in those kind of terms, but I mean, I, I really don't. But I mean, we'll get out there and we'll do what we do. You know what I mean? But I, I we're trying to get that together. I'd like to get to Europe at some point. Yeah, you know, and yeah, you, you want yes, you you want to take it. You want to you know keep doing the charge that's good that you want to 
Yeah, yeah I mean, it wasn't just like Rancid's a one and done. Come, Rancid comes first, you know, when Rancid goes out. But I mean, you know, it, it's fun. It's it's a good group of people. People seem to like it. And, yeah. you know, it's not, you know, I'm, you know, if I go out and I lose money, it's like, it's not the end of the fucking world. You yeah. know what I mean? I just, it, it's a lot of, it, I just like doing it. As long as I like doing it, I'll do you it. You know why is is good too? Because one, it's not, you're not coming out on some, trying to be some metal shit. You're not coming out trying to be some, like, it's, it's, it, it's, it's, um, it, you have a, a right place for it right now where it sticks out. You know what I mean? It's like, um, a, a, a new dish with old, with old, uh, with, with uh, old ingredients. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> like that, that's what it is. Like, oh, okay. I get it. But no, but this is something different with something that I recognize. And the lay of the land wasn't this. Everything was like, even if it was, it was either metallic and not <clears throat> the rock and roll street part of it. It was more the metallic street part. That's where mm-hmm. all underground music kind of started leaning towards, you know, everything was like, even, the hardcore as I know it, my hardcore, which I love metallic hardcore, even that now is on some death metal stuff, which I don't hate. It's all good. But it even turned more when I'm more a thrash guy and the newest stuff, it's even more like death metal stuff, which is all cool, but it's crazy. This is good elements, which which is refreshing. And it's um, what I like, again, songs again. It's good to feel songs. I love hearing it in the car. That's what I be doing when I go to the gym. I put it on. And I like hearing songs again and not just waiting for a mosh part. You know what I mean? Thank you. Are you really going? I see you on Instagram. Are you really going to the gym at like 430 in the morning? Yes. Yes. <laughs> I know. I'm, I have no life. And uh, no, you know what it is? The gym opens at five and it's the I, I take care of a lot of stuff in my, my house. And it's the only time when my everybody's asleep and nobody fucks with me. So I get that. I, yeah. So I know. You know, um, I get my workout in. I could come back. I do my post workout um, remedy. <laughs> you know, I, I drink my shake. I do my 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 thing. I could you know watch my news, check my thing, and then I don't. And then I have like an hour before I wake my son up for school, and take care of breakfast and do all yeah, that yeah, other yeah, shit. Yeah. Yeah. But um, believe me, I hate it. But when I'm done with it, I love it because I it gets a lot of shit done. Like I get a lot of shit done early. You know, and um, yeah. but I got nothing else to do. So, <laughs> no, that's that's fine. No, no, I think it's great. I wish I could do that. I wish I could do that. I, it's I it sucks, but fuck it. And what's up with your sons? They got a band. Yeah, your kids got a band. Or are they trying? No, or what? He, they, they don't. He well, he's he's playing with. He's very, I don't know, he's a little secretive about it. You know oh, what I mean? Which gotcha. is which is fine. You know, because I'm always trying to like, you know, he'll come down. You know, obviously, like all of us, you know, I've collected a lot of stuff over the years. So he'll come down. Like, hey, dad, do you think I could borrow one of your distortion pedals? It's like, yeah, sure, take whatever you yeah. want. You know, whatever. And, uh, you know, but then I'll be like, you want me to show you something? And he's like, no, I'm figuring it out. You know? so, I, I, yeah, I <laughs> hate my, I know you mean. I yeah, I mean, I was, I was really, one of the things I did is I made the kids both take piano for a few years. So they Great. both read, which is really good. Because I don't know if you've ever been in a situation where you've been a bunch of musicians, you know, the, and you're a bunch of guys. And this happened to me like on some studio work I've done over the years. It's like you can always tell the, the guitarist or the bass player that took piano because they're like, oh, I know that chord. It's this, yes. this, that, the other thing. You know what That's I mean? Great. I, they're, they're I, really, I envy that. I yeah. envy that. So uh, so but he yeah, he's he's working it out. He's doing his own thing. I'm pretty much letting him do what they want to do. Yeah. You know, I don't want to. And he plays bass. He's got a bass. He's more into guitar right now. Gotcha. But but he does play bass. He played bass on some uh, like school jazz band things. So he's. I'm just letting him do what he wants to do. You yeah. Know? I'm, I'm letting him find out for themselves. You know, I'm not going to, I don't want to pressure him and I don't want to be a dad. Yeah. Like, no, well, you got to play. Yeah. Basketball. Yeah. Like, I know what you mean. I, I, I do everything. I pull out every paraphernalia, whatever thing I have from every tour I did of my sons to try to get a, a, even a yay. They don't give a fuck. My kids. I show them shows. Look at hundred thousand people. And they look at me and they go, okay, could I leave now that they don't care. So I like one day they will one day they will. They yeah, they you know, I think I think growing up around I mean, at least my kids growing up around the people they grew up around. They, I don't think they're really they're not in awe of it. Yeah, you know, they see some guy with tattoos. Yeah, it's like whatever you know, yelling at somebody. And they're like, Yeah, oh, yeah, there's Lars, you know. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. But you know <laughs> what's uncle. great? You know what's great about the piano part, though, being especially for bass. It's funny you said that. I want to hit since we're talking bass. I always compare 
you know, what a bass should kind of do what a piano does as far as. Yeah. It, the, it has a punch and the sustain is what makes that piano. Like I was telling you how I try to ride the air and sustain in, in my playing is how a piano will be like, boom. Yeah, I know. That's cool. Yeah. You know, and okay. I always say I want my bass to be like a piano, not so much to sound like that, but to do that, to have punch, but have ring, you know, and um, and I guess it's, it's, it's piano considered a percussion. God, I don't know. Oh, string. I don't really... that's when uh, we go. I won't I Google know. it. Froze up there. Well, listening to piano, a percussion or string instrument. That's that's one for the, the record. I, don't, I should probably know that. All right, but no, but good, yo, no, listen, any, um, where to look out, where the, the charge, you got your own, um, does Charger have its own, yeah, you have your own Instagram for Charger, right? Yeah, Charger's got a, its own Instagram, and, um, yeah, and uh, we're on Pirates Press Records, and, I mean, it's, it's on everything now, everything is so... Yeah, I've been also when I because I took out my CD player because I got a new car system. So now I be listening. I got you. I said, oh, let me get it on the Spotify. So it's also on Spotify. But you want to buy that shit, everybody go out and buy that shit. Yeah, thank and, you very much for the plug. And no, and the, 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 the artwork is dope. I love that shit. Yeah, that was Jason's friend. Um, the Great guy's work. Just gave me right, right now. But uh, yeah, we, we got real lucky. We had a lot of help on that record, you know, um, it was a lot of uh, it, it was it was a lot of people really helped us a lot on that record. You know, I got to give a shout out to Chris Dugan, the guy who produced it yeah. and engineered sounds it. Great. He, he did a yeah, it sounds great. He did a really oh, yeah. good job. Um, Lars helped a lot on the background. A lot of those background vocals are Lars. Oh, dope. You know, because he came in and he's just yeah, so yeah he's a kid. Shit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so good at that shit. Yeah, and, and Pirate also, Press too, man, killing it. Yeah, they're killing it with the with the records. And um, also, I want to give a shout out to. Uh, on the song "Some of the Demon," that high voice is this guy Jake Nunn. Oh, is he uh, with somebody? He's in a band called Hellfire. Oh, Hellfire! And their record, they got a new record that I actually played on, is coming out in August. Oh, dope! So, and what's yeah, that on Pirate Press too? I don't know what label it's on. It's not on Pirates Press, but yeah. uh, he, uh, they're they're a really good band, and they sound like a cross between Iron Maiden and like the first two Ozzy records. It's oh, that's cool. cool. Shit. That's cool shit. Yeah. Before we get out of here, Giza Bulla or Steve Harris? I know what it is. God, don't ask me this shit. I um, have to it put you uh, on the okay, spot. Okay, I'll put you this way. I'll put you this way. Because I hear Steve Harris in you too. Don't think I don't. Yeah, I would have to say Geezer Butler, but um, right. Geezer Butler, and I've seen Geezer Butler. I've seen Sabbath twice in my life, and I, the guy's amazing. I got to play with the but, festival. Really? Yes, but they had the drummer for Faith No More, and I'll say it right now: that dude's a murderer. But that day, he was the worst drummer on the planet. But, that's too bad. But yeah, but I got to play with Sabbath. Yeah, that's pretty awesome, though. I mean, Geezer Butler's awesome, but Steve Harris, man, how can you? I know you can't. But I you could. Know, I think something about Steve Harris. I didn't know this <laughs> until I read it about Steve Harris. He was in Bass Player Magazine. He has that same bass, and he plays everything with flat mounts with oh. his fingers. Yeah, that's and for a bass player, if you know anything, flat ones are really hard. They're like the oldest string; they're hard to play. And it's they, yeah, they are. The guy's amazing. He yeah, can, no, he's great. He's great. And I know they're two different, but I had to pick two killers. So, so I put Lars on the spot, and I put Bobby from Biohazard on the spot. With um, I make him pick between Jimi Hendrix and Stevie Ray Vaughan because I'm a Stevie Ray Vaughan guy. But I make him go at it. You gotta pick. I don't give a fuck. Oh, you got to see them. I go at it. Well, I just can't wait for the comments. <laughs> Freeman doesn't know what he's talking yeah, about. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not okay. even, no. Don't worry. Listen to me. I'm like one string, third dot, second string, third space. So we you good. But listen. Credit, man. I've seen you play, man. You know what you're doing. What are you <laughs> like, talking about? I, I know what I'm doing with my stuff. Everything else is. I got to throw a Hail Mary. I'm going to do the couple. shameless, shameless kiss. Up yeah, here. I was going to say, you look extra handsome. I and do. I was going to wear yeah. the long sleeve, but I but I have it in the wash because I had it. At you actually gym. gave me this shirt like, I don't know, 10 or 12 years ago. Wait, I'm, a, I'm actually going to send you. I got a new line I'm dropping. I'm going to send you a package. We're getting it ready, but I'm going to send you some stuff. So it's some cool shit. That's some cool shit. And it's your colors is black and red. So it's it go <laughs> with right. the charger. Yeah. But listen, okay. I'm glad you were able to do this, man. You know what's up. I love the band. I'm glad you're doing it. And you know what's up. I'm a big fan. Keep killing it. I hope to see you guys. We need to do that. Mad ball, rancid, 
Hoya Rock, Matt, whatever, yeah, Casa the Rock, Smoking be. Word Tour, eventually when this world gets normal again. I would love to. Hey, by the way, thank you very much. You know, I've known you a long time and you've always, from day one, you've always like been a really good friend. I really nah, appreciate it. Nah, that. I, definitely. You, you, Matt, really, you may be a fan into a style that I detested, that you may be changed my whole look at it and i became a big fan not just of you of rancy because i loved rancy to, but i was like yeah rancy is cool till i saw you guys live changed yeah. the game and you made me look at my base a little bit extra so you ever, but, you remember what you told me one time i don't know if you remember this we were we were playing in boston i think we were we were playing together it was like house of blues or something and and you were you were leaving we weren't going to see each other again it was like the last show i think of the tour or something and you're like okay i'm leaving by the way, you're playing on the next bad ball record with those crazy bass lines, but I'm taking credit for it. Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? <laughs> Absolutely. No, no kid yourself. Do it. I don't care. No kid yourself. When we do the next yeah, record, you, you're, you're gonna get that invite. I will show up. Yeah. I will I will show up. Listen, anyway, but thanks, thanks very much for having me on this podcast. And if you ever want to do that bass thing, I We're would good. love love to do it. Um, um absolutely. We're gonna work on it in the future. We're gonna do it. Me, Craig, you, and I got another special. I can't drop drop it here, but we're gonna. We're going to represent uh, for the base. You got my number and just call me and I'll be there. Absolutely. And we're going to be dropping this today, actually, because I wanted to drop it today, but I'm going to send you the flyer later on, my brother. So okay, great. Good shit. But yo, good to talk to you. I'll text you later. And one love. Tell everybody what's up. All right. Thanks, man. Take care. Be safe, bro.